What's up everyone, it's your boy Red 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are going to be reviewing Forbidden Door 2024, yes AEW just had their Forbidden Door pay-per-view and first of all I just want to say thank you to Tony Khan, Rocky Romero, Tetsuya Naito, everybody who was involved in organizing this pay-per-view and really getting together, we have four different promotions that were involved in this pay-per-view, we had AEW, New Japan Wrestling, we had CMLL, and we also had um, Stardom. So we had four different promotions, all different wrestlers from all across the world coming together to compete at Forbidden Door. So like I said, this was a very, very awesome pay-per-view. I had a lot of fun. So today we're going to talk about all the matches. You're going to get my star ratings and my feelings on the pay-per-view overall. So let's do this. Roll it. So first thing right off the bat, there are 15 matches to talk about, and I still think Tony Khan, this was a little bit overbooked. He added another match that we had no idea about until like the pre-show legit started, so we have five matches on the pre-show. When I think of pre-show, I think like three matches the most. Five, you're pushing it. <coughs> but we had another match thrown in there, and it was Kyle Fletcher versus Serpentico. And this one, like, yes, I kind of just came out of nowhere. Kyle Fletcher just recently lost the Ring of Honor television title, and he's been kind of on a losing streak. So I think they wanted to just bring Kyle Fletcher in here, get some more Don Callis family exposure, and see him go up against Serpentico. This was kind of a little bit of a squash match. One and a half stars. Really nothing that we needed to see. Next up, we have a four split tag match. We had the House of Black, Private Party, Gabe Kidd, and Robert Strong, and Ishii and Kyle O'Reilly. And this one was a lot of fun. This one actually kind of, after the Serpentico and Kyle Fletcher thing, this actually kind of woke me up. Like, and you know, my son was really into it he was loving it house of black was tearing it up private party was doing a bunch of high flying moves we had kyle coming in and a lot of people you know and roderick strong having their little storytelling moments and stuff like that so everybody got a little bit of spot and a little bit of shine in this one we had house of black for the win and i'm going a three star for this one because this was just a very satisfying basic you know four like split tag match but it wasn't anything spectacular but they do deliver Next up, we have Mariah May versus Soraya, and this was for the Owen Hart Cup tournament, and we had whoever wins gets to go on to the next round and fight Hikaru Shida, and we had Mariah May taking the victory. This was kind of foreseen. I would say the only real negative with this one was that the conclusion was kind of foreseen, but we had a lot of cool antics. Tony Storm getting involved. We have Harley Cameron, you know, the outcasts kind of thing. So we had a lot of good antics going on on the outside, good in-ring wrestling and stuff. Easy three-and-a-half star match for me, and I think they chose the right winner with Mariah May going on because I want to see Mariah May most likely go all the way win the tournament and end up challenging Tony at all in that's what I'm expecting now we have Willow Nightingale teaming up with Tam Nagano and versing in a tag match going against Chris Statlander and we have Mom Momo Watanabe sorry if I butchered those names at all but with this cool tag match really just building more beef between Willow and Chris because they're going to be going up against each other on beach break which is coming up next Wednesday on Dynamite they're going to be going against each other in the Owen Hart Cup tournament for the semifinals I believe so this is just building more beef you know more story stuff stokely's involved a little bit it was cool it was hard hitting in a really like satisfying way and everything I, but nothing real spectacular like i said this is one of those matches that i'm like this could have been probably like a collision match you know what i mean and i don't really think we needed this on the pre-show or on forbidden door this could have easily been a collision match or a rampage match you know just hyping up more beef but two and a half stars i'm gonna give this match we have our last pre-show match and that's the lucha bros and mystico going up against suji titan titan and T takahashi so this was a uh, triple threat like trios match kind of thing you know so for me, this one actually kind of floored me. I was pretty surprised. The guys go all the way out there. Mystico and Lucha Brothers, they show up. Suji, Titan, and Takahashi, they get a lot of offense in. There was a lot of back and forth, and they actually gave these guys a lot of time. I was surprised. There was a lot of time. They all went back and forth, went at it. This is easy, probably three and a half star match for me, because this one actually quite surprised me, because this is one that when I was talking about on you know, picking the winners, I picked uh, Mystico and Lucha Bros to win, and they did win. When I was picking winners and doing my prediction video, this is one that I would say, oh, I would take off the card. But this was actually a very entertaining and like energetic 
pre-show match that was great like warm-up kind of style for you know the upcoming pay-per-view now we're getting to the main event the forbidden door pay-per-view and we opened up with mjf and hechicero i believe i have all these matches in a row of how they came out that's how we're going to talk about them but mjf starting off with hechicero and this one i liked this match and it was cool to see mjf back a uh, few, few hiccups here and there, like one for MJF. He was trying to crowd surf on his entrance, and that didn't go over very well. And just, just Hechicero on him, it, it was kind of clunky. It was a little bit clunky. There were some mistakes here and there. They did hit moments and have some solid things going on. But I think just, yeah, like a little bit too short of a match and just one that I expected better. I really did. What, what I must say from MJF and Hechicero, knowing both of them, I expected a little bit more from both of them in this match. So this one, two and a half stars, not really the best opening match or anything like that. Next up, we have the Elite. That's the Young Bucks and Okada, and they're going up against the Acclaimed and Tanahashi. And yeah, this one was one of those ones that has a lot of cool antics, a lot of funny heel work. My favorite thing about this one was really just Okada and the Young Bucks working heel, really playing with Max Caster and Anthony Bowens and Tanahashi. You know, there's a good part in this match where Okada looks like he's going to start the match against Tanahashi. The audience members are very into it, and they're like, this is awesome. And then you just see okada tag out and he rolls out of the ring just playing so heel so that was my favorite part of this match is just the antics and the heel work by the elite but they take the victory in this one so i was wrong on this one because i picked the acclaim and tanahashi to win so i'm gonna go three stars on this one this was a basic tag match you know nothing really crazy nothing wild they just did what they had to do to kind of get the time passed you know like i said if they could have did anything more it would have been a more surprising finish to me next up we have brian danielson and Takai and this one the two dragons going against each other we have the american dragon and the japanese dragon going against each other and man this one was hard hitting it was technical it was wrestling at its finest this was like like watching like a chef prepare a nice fine steak and just seeing that plate get formed and put together like that's literally what this match was like it was like watching just a really good chef put together a very nice plate and just seeing that presentation when you see it on the plate one thing i must say for this one is there's a little bit like towards the end where it's like brian looked like he was kind of really hurt like his arm i don't know if he was selling it really good you know it could have been a work it could have been a work and he was just selling it really good but towards the end of the match it did look like brian was hindered by his neck and his back because he had his back and his neck very heavily taped up and stuff so i know of course that came into play because takagi was working him and Takagi is a very heavy, very stiff wrestler, so he was laying into Brian. Brian Danielson ends up taking the victory in this one, and this one I'm going to go four and a half stars easy for this match this was a technical masterpiece next up we have another trios match and that's samoa joe hook and shibata taking on the learning tree and jeff cobb that was their uh secret member that they added it was you know chris jericho and big bill they added jeff cobb who is now i believe he's the new japan strong or new japan wrestling television champion that's what he is right now and this match eh, it was it was okay it was they did what they had to do my favorite parts of this match were seeing samoa joe go against jeff cobb that was really cool big bill against shibata that was another good spot right there Everybody got a little piece, you know, Chris Jericho was doing his, hi guys, hi guys, his typical like heel antics, very laying into the whole thing, but people are still cheering him. Everybody on discourse and online and internet is talking about how we want Jericho to retire, but this Long Island crowd, there were still people like cheering and standing for Jericho as the learning tree was coming to the uh, to coming to the ring. Like people were still cheering for him. So yeah, I think his heel thing, I think he's slowly, slowly getting it over. But yeah, still, you know, I think we're just going to see Jericho and the Learning Tree people just, just kind of take a bunch of losses and like, you know, get it to them. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're planning. I'm not too sure. But for me, this one, two stars. Next up, we have Tony Storm and Mina Shirakawa. And in terms of matches on this card, this is the match that had the best build, the best story going into the match. It's Timeless Tony Storm and Mina Shirakawa. Two reasons why is Timeless Tony Storm is just in the height of career. She is peaking 
peaking. She is really right now at the best part of her career, doing some of the greatest work she's ever done. And Mina Shirakawa is over as hell. Like she came in and for real, the AEW audience and the American audience just accepted her because she has personality just oozing out of every pore of her body. So for real, Mina Shirakawa and Tony Storm easily story-wise have the best build going into this pay-per-view. And what I'm going to say, Tony Storm took the victory in this one. But Mina Shirakawa easily was, like I said, over. The audience members clearly wanted Mina. They were chanting for Mina. There was multiple times during this match they wanted her to win. Mina basically was laying in most of the offense. I would say 70% of this match was Mina Shirakawa just laying in offense and damaging Tony Storm's knee. So... But they still did a fantastic job telling the story, doing the whole of Mariah May, which side is she going to choose, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, tussling, pulling at her heartstrings. So this was, like I said, a really fun match, easy, four and a half stars, and one of the contenders for match of the night. So we have Zack Sabre Jr. going against Orange Cassidy, and this one, I have glowing recommendations for this one. I'm going to tell you right now, this is my five-star match. I have only one five-star match on this pay-per-view. And it's Zack Sabre Jr. versus Orange Cassidy. This was another kind of similar to Danielson and Tagagi, a technical masterpiece. But what's great about this one is Orange Cassidy and Zack Sabre Jr. are two character workers, great wrestlers, and they actually have wanted to work together for a very long time. Zack Sabre Jr., I watched the medium media scrum after the pay-per-view. He said they wanted this match a year ago at the last Forbidden Door. So to get it now, and they're finally getting their match, and to see the technical wizardry that they put on. Like, I had seen, I they did moves that I had never seen done before, for real. Like, you have to go out. If any match on this card, this is the match that I'm like, you have to go out. You have to watch this one, because like I said, Orange Cassidy and Zack Sabre Jr. are just two wrestlers who are geniuses. They know the entertainment of the game, they know their characters, and they know how to work in the ring. So it's really cool to see these two go against each other, and I was very happy that they gave Zack Sabre Jr. the win. He basically locked up Orange Cassidy in this crazy-ass submission that I've never seen before. Like, literally, all he had to, all he was able to do was say, I quit. He couldn't even use any of his limbs. He had to say, I quit, and Zack Sabre Jr. got the victory. So easy for me, five stars. Now we have the TNT ladder match, and that has El Fantasmo, Leo Rush, we have Briscoe, we have Jack Perry, Takeshita, and Dante Martin in this one. A lot of cool high spots, a lot of good moments. The entrances were really cool for this one. This match kind of woke up the audience members a lot of the ways too because there was a lot of cool table spots, a lot of cool bumps. All the people were really getting in all their offense and stuff like that. Jack Perry does take the win and is our new TNT champion. One thing I must say for real is Takeshita, I think he deserves, I really think he deserves of the TNT title. I still wanted him to win it, but he had some really cool spots too. Specifically, Briscoe did this one where he sandwiched Takeshita between a table and a ladder and like just freaking launched on top of him and he went crunching through. Jack Perry had a good view of it too because Jack Perry was on the ground watching him and just literally like you can see him as a fan. Jack Perry was like, I'm going to stay down here. I'm going to watch this first before I get up to go back in the ring. So it was really cool. That was a very fun, like I said, match. A lot of cool, fun high spots. Easy for me, three stars. I'm going to say a three-star ladder match because I've seen ladder matches and I've seen way more better. Like just, I've seen just better. That's the problem. I'm really picky when it comes to ladder matches, TLC matches. Like I got spoiled. I really got spoiled by the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian and the Dudley Boys. Like they freaking spoil the hell out of you. So when you see some of these other ladder matches, there's just things that happen that it's like they don't really meet that expectation. But like I said, this one was still very good. Really, like I said, really solid match. Three stars, easy. Now we have our title for title match, and that's Mercedes Monet going against Stephanie Vakir. Mercedes Monet putting up her TBS title. Stephanie Vakir putting up the New Japan Strong Wrestling title. So, oh man, this was very exciting. This was probably excitement wise one of the matches that i was most excited for and to see them go in the ring they really went for it one thing i must say though i must be honest about the audience here again was on the side of the stephanie the challenger like or like well not really the challenger because they're both putting up their titles they're both kind of challengers but there this audience was on the side of stephanie just kind of like that tony storm and mina shirakawa match 
the audience members were all for Mina. They were all for Stephanie. Like, literally, as the match kept going, kept going, Vakira kept working, working in the ring, doing all these cool bumps and doing all these cool counters and moves and submissions and slowly just earned the love and just got over, which is really cool because Stephanie only had one match in front of AEW audiences, and that was on Collision against Lady Frost. I liked the match, but there could have been more exposure for Stephanie before we got to this pay-per-view. But Stephanie still did her job and got over during this match, which I thought was fantastic. Of course, Mercedes helping out because she's the in the ring with her, doing the moves, helping out, you know, work in the ring too. But uh, I really, really wanted Tony Khan to surprise all of us and pull Stephanie out with the win. And it would have looked so cool too with Stephanie having four titles and all that shit. But yeah, Mercedes, of course, takes the victory. My favorite part besides the besides stephanie getting over in this match and her working in the ring my other favorite part of this match was the end we had a surprise return of the dmd Britt baker yes dr Britt baker is back she's in the house the aew legend so i'm excited i hope she's she's obviously going to be the next one challenging for mercedes title so Oh, I really hope they get Brit to be the one to beat Mercedes because we're already in that danger spot of having Mercedes being too overexposed and people aren't really liking her. So I think Mercedes needs to go super heel and have that heel turn. It would be perfect for Britt Baker to do that, to be the one to go against her. That would be a perfect storyline. Next up, we have Tetsuyo Naito versus John Moxley for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And this one... A lot, a lot of love for this one right here. The entrances and the audience members were really into the beginning of this match. This is one of those ones where I would say you could kind of see the audience members getting a little tired from the pay-per-view and how long it was and stuff like that because they were into the entrances and they were into the beginning of the match. But as the match went on, the energy kind of got sucked out of the room a little bit. One thing I must say that I think this match needed for sure is some more just aggressive blood spots some more you know chairs maybe no disqualification i just wanted more stuff because when you're watching john and tetsuya go at it you can see tetsuya naito's kind of hindered by his knees he has his knees very heavily taped up and he's wearing these knee pads and you can see he's hindered and can't do as much and john and him are trying to do the best they can but like i said it was kind of like like a like a whoopee cushion like slowly the air just got sucked out of the room and you can tell because at the beginning of the match people are really into it and then as it went on it got kind of clunky kind of messy in the finish wasn't the greatest so that's one thing i must say too like you, you for a good wrestling match you have to have a solid finish and i don't think the finish was there i actually think that the match that they had before this where john beat naito for the title was better than this one so i'm gonna go three stars for this match now we have our final match and that's swerve strickland taking on will osprey for the aew world heavyweight championship whose house Swerve's house, baby. Swerve Strickland did end up taking the victory. This is a really good match. Like I said, just seeing two awesome guys at the height of their careers, the peak of their careers, going at it. This is literally a dream match. You know what I mean? They have some cool counters, some awesome moves. The athleticism is off the charts. Storytelling really going on in the ring. You know, Swerve and Will are both great at in ring storytelling. So you see that take place. We get interference stuff from Don Callis. We get a moment where Will Ospreay looks like he's going to go at Prince Nana. Really entertaining stuff. One thing I must say, though, is Swerve Strickland. I wish. AEW and Tony Khan would protect his specials more. Will Ospreay kicked out of like four house calls. He got stomped like three times. He got stomped onto an announce table. There's just too much of people kicking out of Swerve Strickland's finishers and his specials, and I don't like that. They really need to protect his moves, and it's kind of impossible now because we've gone through multiple pay-per-views and multiple matches where i've seen swerve strickland go against people and he'll swerve stomp them twice he'll house call them two three four times and they'll still kick out and it's like at some point like I said you have to have a finisher that is very well protected that is not often kicked out like the one winged angel by kenny omega i think only one person has ever kicked out of that move so it's like you need something like that so that's my one huge negative with this one four and a half stars easy swerve strickland will easy four and a half stars like i said my only negative is 
the treatment of some of the stuff of uh, Swerve Strickland's finishers. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this video. I know this was a lengthy one and a long one, but you know, 15 matches we had to talk about. I had a lot to say and stuff, but like I said, Forbidden Door, overall a grade for me, Forbidden Door. I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. Like I said, it was on the cusp of being really good, but to be honest, to shrink this down to make it an A-plus pay-per-view, I would have taken off at least three matches, given more time to some of the other matches, and then if you had some better build for some of these matches throughout the weeks prior, this would have been an A plus show, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go an A minus for my grade on Forbidden Door. My thoughts and my opinions on Forbidden Door, please let me know down in the comment section what you thought. Also, like the video, that definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.